If you're considering MicroM's MicroCOS 2 or MicroCOS 3 for your next project, you may be curious as to what work would be needed to get one of these real-time kernels up and running on your hardware. The exact steps involved vary somewhat according to CPU architecture and toolchain, but generally, the effort required is not overwhelming. In this video, I'll explain how you can get started with the kernels on an ARM Cortex-M3 or Cortex-M4 based MCU using Embedded Workbench from IAR. Generally, running either MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 requires a project, a collection of kernel and other source files, along with toolchain settings for building the files and loading the resulting code into hardware. The contents of a typical project incorporating MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 are shown here. Application code makes up the topmost layer of such a project. Ultimately, you will provide your own application code for your MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 based project. But in the initial phases of your development efforts, you can use example code for MicroM. The next layer in a kernel-based project is made up of hardware-independent or portable code for MicroM. Code from three different MicroM software modules resides at this layer. MicroC CPU, which is a collection of definitions and utility routines needed by MicroM's code and also available for use in your application. MicroC Lib, which contains MicroM's own implementations of a number of standard library functions in either the MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 kernel. The majority of the code contained in MicroM's modules is written in highly portable ANSI C. There is, however, a small amount of hardware-specific code required in a MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 based project. This code consists of a BSP or board support package and what are known as ports for MicroC CPU in the kernels. In putting together your kernel-based project, you likely won't need to develop any ports. A port is written for a CPU architecture, and there are already Cortex-M3 and Cortex-M4 ports available for MicroM. Of the two categories of hardware-specific code, then, the BSP code, which is tied to a particular board, is the more likely to be a source of issues. To fulfill the BSP requirement for your project, you have two basic options. One is to obtain a BSP already developed by MicroM. If MicroM's engineering team has worked with your board, then an example project for the board should be available through the download center of the MicroM website. Most of the projects available through this page incorporate all the source code, including a BSP, needed to run one of MicroM's kernels. In the event that an example project is not available for your platform, if, for instance, you're using a custom board, your second option is to develop a BSP yourself. Just a handful of BSP code is required by MicroM's kernel, so development of a BSP is not as challenging as it can seem. Additionally, MicroM now offers application notes to guide you through the process. The application notes listed here were written specifically for the combination of IR Embedded Workbench and Cortex-M3 or Cortex-M4 based hardware platforms. They can be downloaded for free from MicroM's website, where each is packaged with an example BSP and the full source code for all the other components required in a kernel based project. The application notes are even accompanied by templates that automate the steps involved in creating such a project in Embedded Workbench. Starting work on a new hardware platform always involves plenty of unknowns. Your kernel doesn't have to be one of these sources of confusion, however. With the application notes and example projects available for MicroM's website, you can quickly get MicroCOS2 or MicroCOS3 up and running on your board and move on to writing innovative, multitask applications that take full advantage of the many services that these kernels offer.